Hello everybody, it's Broken Nose Gaming here, and I'm back with World of Tanks Blitz. I am trying a different format. The first thing you'll notice is no face cam, and the second thing is I'm only going to do one replay now per tank, just to try and keep everything a little bit more compact. That being said, I actually have a two tank review in this video. Realistic Battles was on this past weekend and I decided to play both the Polish tier 6 premium, the Pudel, and the American tier 6 tank destroyer, the M18 Hellcat. So I will go ahead and just give some quick stats. I'll actually compare them to their contemporaries. So I'm going to compare the Pudel to, I think it's called the Britannia Panther, which was another tier six premium tank that was, I think only available in lock boxes and I got a hold of one. Anyways, let me go ahead. I will throw up the stats to compare the two. There we are. So these are, of course, base stats. They are not with any of the provisions, consumables, crew skills, or equipment slots that are available for either tank. So if we take a look at the DPM, they are identical at 1669. The Pudel does have an advantage in penetration, 10 millimeters more at 160. They both have the same alpha, same rate of fire same shell velocity because it's the same gun in the 75 millimeter l70 that the panther would normally have in terms of weapon handling the pudel is a little bit better than the french panther as you can see it's got better aim time and better dispersion though it does not have as good of gun elevation you can get two degrees more in the french panther versus 18 degrees, but that doesn't really matter. They both have the same eight degrees of gun depression. In terms of mobility, the Pudel has got a little bit more of an advantage in the power to weight ratio department. In terms of top speed, it is slower by five kilometers per hour. They have the same reverse speed, same horsepower. It's just the Pudel, I believe, is a little bit lighter at uh, 43 tons versus 45 tons. It gets a little bit more power to weight ratio, a little bit effective more horsepower to tons, but that's really it. Camo's almost identical. It's 1% better uh, after firing and still they're the same moving. It's actually got a little worse credit coefficient than its counterpart, 5% less. It does have better view range. It has a uh, worse HP pool, but that is correctable and I can show you how and then in terms of armor uh, it is a little bit weaker than the French Panther at least around the hull slightly weaker especially in the rear and if you look at the turret armor it's about the same except again for the rear uh, for some reason it's got 20 millimeters on the back and if you take a look at the win rate the uh, Poodle's a little lower on the totem pole than the French Panther, but I believe there's far less players playing the French Panther than the Poodle as well. So, but if we take a look at how I've equipped this tank, at least, uh, you can get up to 1120 hit points. And the way you can do that is the first thing in terms of provisions, you have the enhanced sandbag armor, which gets you 6% extra HP. So that gives us 60 more hit points. And then if you go in here, you can also do improved assembly, which will give us another 6%. So we have 12% more HP, which puts us up to 1120. Now in terms of equipment, uh, I actually run calibrated shells just to bump that penetration up even more. Uh, 168, just, I mean, I could run this and it would drop me down to five seconds, but I mean, five and a half seconds, whatever not a big deal it just puts the penetration up even better for a tier 6 medium i do gun handling improvements to bring the aim time down to 3.1 seconds toolbox improved assembly defense system improved optics will bring us up to 281 this brings our power to weight ratio up even more to 23 and a half and gives us a top speed average speed of 39 kilometers per hour i use now this is kind of a depends on what you want to do personally since i'm a world of tanks pc player coming over to blitz 
I use the consumable delivery system, which gives me a 15% bonus to the cooldown speed, because I use a very basic setup, and this probably handicaps me, but as you can see, I use the first aid kit, I use a repair kit, and then I use a multi-purpose, so fire extinguisher or any of the other things I can double up on. That's because in World of Tanks PC, we don't have these other consumables like adrenaline or a, a power boost. These, the power boost would fall under uh, provisions. It would be like the enhanced improved fuel and the reload would just be from like the food consumable. So it's weird to me having these particular consumables in the game and being someone who comes from PC, I just stick with the same basic three. I will go ahead and I will load up a replay. Now this is realistic, like I said, so it's a little bit different. Realistic, there's no RNG when it comes to the damage you will be doing if your gun does 160 damage. Your gun's gonna be doing 160 damage every shot, unless you have the crew skill. This one right here, if it gives you uh, maximum damage on the roll, so you can technically high roll as long as you have this particular precision fire crew skill that still works as far as i know but let's go ahead and go to the replay so here we are on alpenstat it's a tier six tier five match which is pretty common and realistic i've noticed whenever i play tier six i generally end up in a tier six five match every once in a while very rarely i'll get a tier six seven but here we go. So I kind of stop and I wait to see what everyone's going to do. It looks like, for the most part, I got about four tanks going this way. And I got the other three going, I'm presuming, either into town or to sea. I let my ELC go ahead and the other medium as well goes ahead. I kind of hang back just a little bit. I'm sort of either expecting a fast tank to already be up here, or I can catch a tank on the ridge. There is a Panzer IV hiding behind that train, and I miss it entirely. And now I have a Sturmgeschütz behind me, and luckily he lets me back up. The Panzer IV hits me with 140, so I believe he was firing APCR. I get a few shots in, and then I get hit on my right hand side near B cap so right away I noticed that most of the other tanks must have gone into the town I try to reposition myself into the town here we go and the Wolverine so now I've got five tanks over here my other tanks are making their way into town and I see a KV-1 I track him he gets hit by my teammate I put one into his turret and this is kind of weird <laughs> this SU-100 comes in I hit him not on purpose and then he goes backwards after taking a shot and I hit him again now I finally can uh, take a shot at the KV-1 and as you can see I high roll I get that 200 from doing three consecutive shots so even though in realistic you can only do your normal damage you can still high roll with that skill now, I didn't see this ARL-44 right away, so he manages to put a shell into me. And now I'm trying to reposition myself to where I can get a better shot on him. He hits the ground. I managed to hit his, I'm assuming his hatch, or I overmatched his, I don't think I overmatched his roof. I think I just hit his hatch and ricocheted. He takes out our Sturmgeschütz and... I back him into the wall, somebody tracks him, the ELC, um, we kind of take care of him real quick. So we're down to a heavy and a tank destroyer. Now I have no idea where the tank destroyer is. I'm going to cap the base because the there's the heavy tank and he's gone. And now I get hit and this M36 Jackson comes out of nowhere and I let everyone know, hey, <laughs> the tank destroyer is over here, guys. So I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for this guy to show up. I think he stops. It turns out he didn't. And this guy is on full health. So I don't know where this guy came from. I don't know where he was sitting. 
I put a shot into him. I fire from the hip, which was a mistake. I bounce him. My Wolverine is helping me out as much as he can. I track him. He repairs. And unfortunately, I die, but the AMX ELC decides to come in and ram him and then shoot him. And we win. So yes, I did die, but I did 1800 damage and managed to net 45,000 credits. All right, now we can move on to the next tank, which I said earlier was going to be the M18 Hellcat. Here it is. Again, I'll just bring up some of the stats real quick here. It's pretty quick. Its top speed is 65 kilometers per hour, a little bit slower than the PC version. I believe we were able to go 72. I'm not sure if they've nerfed it down. I know the Super Hellcat, which is something that's in PC and may come to Blitz, the PC version of the Super Hellcat can hit 72 kilometers per hour, but it is also a tier seven. You have a 90 millimeter gun, 175 millimeters of pen, 225 alpha damage, pretty good. The tank, I mean, it's a fun tank. I, I like it, or a tank destroyer. Again, I run a very similar setup to the Goodell. Same three consumables, my provisions. Since this gets me a total top average speed of 41 and power to weight ratio of 26, if you add the regular fuel, it actually only increases it a little bit, 0.7 horsepower per ton and only one extra kilometer per hour. I'd rather have more uh, terrain crossing capacity at this point so that way I can get across. It also helps with the whole turn rate a little bit and the turret turn rate. So I went that way. Instead of doing two fuels, I did uh, two of the uh, consumables or whatever, the colas for the tank. Now I have not fully set this tank up. As you can see, I've actually only gone to the second tier of equipment, but I do a gun rammer, so that gets me down to about five and a half seconds of reload, which is the same reload as the Pudel. I use a camo net because it's a turreted tank destroyer, so the neat thing about a camo net is as long as your tank is stationary, it doesn't matter if you turn your turret, you stay camouflaged, and that puts me up to a massive 70% while stationary, so it's pretty hard to spot me. And then I did go for the engine modification, Gets me 41 uh, as the average speed, 26 horsepower per ton, and then it gets me the whole turn rate to be a little bit better. And then I only put the enhanced gun laying drive on board. It gets me down to three seconds. If I did open up the third tier, it would get me down to 2.7, but for right now, I just didn't see the point. Now I'll go ahead and I will throw the stats up to compare it. I'm going to compare it to the Tech Tree counterpart, which would be the m36 jackson so let me go ahead and i will bring that up right now there we are so as you can see there is a very large disparity between the m36 and the m18 there is a almost 15 percent dpm difference and again these are stock values no you know modifications equipment consumables applied 2166 versus 1877 same pen same alpha because it is the same gun but yeah that rate of fire and reload time stock 6.2 seconds versus 7.2 seconds so literally a whole second makes a big difference also gun handling there's much better gun handling statistics on the m18 1.63 aim time and it's got better gun dispersion while moving the turret rotating things like that Speed's going to be an obvious one. 65 forwards, 15 backwards versus 40 forwards, 11 backwards. That's very slow. The horsepower to ton, much better. And that's because if you look at the weight, the M18 is almost about nine tons lighter than the M36. That, of course, does come at a cost of armor. And we'll get to that in a second. Better engine power, better horsepower to ton ratio, better effective. It's even got better terrain resistance than the M36. Literally, in terms of the statistics looking up and down, the M18 is just better in almost every single way so far than the Jackson. The only downside, credit coefficients, a whole 3% worse, which whatever, it's tier 6, who cares? Even with the 8.5 weird credit economy adjustment, you're still going to make credits. I, I don't think that really affects it until you get into like, tier 8 maybe tier 7 but definitely tier 8 9 and 10 view range is the same both at 240 the m18 does have less health 800 hit points versus 900 and then this is the big difference if you take a look at the armor the turret armors 
roughly the same. They both have 76 in the front. The Hellcat does have a little bit of better side and rear turret armor, but the big difference is the hull armor. You get a whopping 13 millimeters all around on the M18. So yes, you can go fast, but you are a glass cannon. If anyone hits you with HE in your hull, you are done. Meanwhile, while the M36 is slower, has worse gun handling, etc. At least it does have better armor. The front on the hull is 100 and then you got 55 on the sides and rear. So you can at least bounce some things as you saw with the Pudel. I bounced a shot off the front of the M36. I guarantee you if I would have shot into an M18, it wouldn't matter. I would have penned him no matter what. Uh, in terms of win rate, it's pretty close, but the M18 is about 3%, maybe 4% better than the M36. These are both Tech Tree tanks, so it's not like one's stupidly broken over the other, but the M18, in my opinion, does have a much better advantage. All that being said, I'll go ahead and I will load up the replay for my M18. Again, this is another realistic battle. All right, so here we are on Falls Creek. Once again, it's a tier 6, tier 5 match, mainly tier 6s with a couple tier 5s. My heavy team consists of a KV-1S and two KV-2s. Meanwhile, they have a KV-1S, a KV-2, and a 3601 Henschel, which I feel like is a slightly better team of heavies versus mine because all of my heavies take a very long time to reload. Luckily, my reload time is 5.6 seconds. So I can dish out some damage pretty quickly. And I go ahead and move up towards A. I have a Stritzvon 74 and a Panzer IV following me. I believe I also end up having the Leopard Light Tank follow me as well. Right now it's just the two mediums. But I go ahead and I pull back here. I let everyone know, hey, I'm going up to A. The heavies are engaging on the other side of the map. A Leopard shows up, and I managed to put 225 into him through the wall. There's also a T-37. Both of these tanks end up getting taken out fairly quickly, and they were very aggressive. I don't think that was uh, a great move. They end up going back to the garage pretty quickly. That did not pay off, in my opinion. So I go ahead and I move up even further. There's a VK-3001 Porsche. I can't get a shot on him, but an M4 Sherman shows up. I track him and put 225 into him. He does manage to hit me for 160, but my reload, I put another 225 into him. He doesn't fire again. Oh, yes, he does. And I trade shots again. So for that 160 HP that I lost, I've basically put him down to zero hit points. So I think that was a good trade off. The Leopard comes in and cleans up for me. And I continue on my way. So they're down to three heavies at this point. The KV-1S, the KV-2, and the 3601 Henschel. I find the 3601, and I put one in them all the way across that way. The Leopard, I think, rams into them, and then I just finish them off. And now we're just down to the KV-2. So this was a pretty quick match, actually. And the Hellcat really did make some quick work out of the M4 and even the 3601. So we find the last tank, the KV-2. He's hiding in C. So I kind of wait because I don't want to end up getting a 152 to the face, but he's not facing me, so I put one into him. And I think he finally realizes, oh, hey, he's behind me. But one more shot, and the KV-1S helps me out, and we take out... The KV-2, and with that, I close up with 18 or almost 1,800 damage, 1,782, and 20,000 credits. Not a bad match. So there you have it. Two tanks in realistic battles that, in my opinion, do really well. I really do like the Pudel. I actually played a few matches in the French Panther and didn't get the same results as I did with the Pudel, so more props to it. I believe this tank was actually available in the shop. It was part of a mission, and then it ended up being in the shop, so it was a pretty cheap purchase, I believe, as well. I can't remember how much gold it was. And then the Hellcat Tech Tree tank, easy to grind to. 
would definitely recommend the Hellcat over the M36 just because while you have less armor, you're much more mobile and you have much better DPM. That's going to go ahead and wrap up this little episode of World of Tanks. If you like the new format, let me know. If not, tell me to go back to the face cam and I'll do the old style. But I hope you enjoyed both of these replays and both of these tanks reviewed. I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.